I spoke about uh, really an update on what's happening with skin cancer prevention efforts in the U.S. and in Canada. Uh, skin cancer is a very serious problem uh, worldwide, but certainly we do see it in a large measure in the U.S. and in Canada. And we've worked on a variety of prevention efforts over the years to try to impact on the incidence and the mortality from skin cancer. We've been somewhat effective, but there's lots of room for improvement. Well, probably the largest program has been the efforts of the American Academy of Dermatology. Uh, the nationwide skin cancer screening programs began in 1985, so it's almost 30 years now. And uh, over that period of time, we've actually screened 2.5 million people. Each year, about 4,000 dermatologists in the U.S., plus their staffs, uh, get involved in the effort. Uh, tens of thousands of melanomas have been picked up, and hundreds of thousands of non-melanoma skin cancers have been picked up. So it's been quite effective in that sense as a mass screening effort, but also as an educational tool to remind people the importance of sun protection and hopefully changing their behaviors to lower their risk. Well, the American Academy of Dermatology has been at the forefront of this too, along with the Skin Cancer Foundation in the U.S. And uh, basically, the idea is to get the word out to the public to protect themselves from the sun. Um, it's, it's a tough message. The two things we focused on this primary prevention efforts have been in regular use of sunscreen and sun protection and also not going to tanning salons, uh, not using tanning beds, or as I like to call them, tanning coffins, because I think it gets the message across a little better. There is some regulation of tanning beds in the States, not as strong as it is in many other countries, and certainly things are changing here in the UK as well as in Australia. But um, we're working towards it. Each state has a separate set of rules within the U.S. Uh, there is a bill before Congress now to try to develop national uh, regulations. There is some support for that, and we're working very strongly to push that. Well, we talked about prevention. We talked about really two kinds of prevention, primary prevention and secondary prevention. Primary prevention is uh, changing behaviors, protecting yourself from ultraviolet radiation, and that impacts on the incidence of the cancer. Secondary prevention is early detection. If you have a spot, come have it checked. That impacts on mortality. So there's two different approaches, and there's also a debate that goes back and forth of where should we spend our resources on primary prevention, behavioral changes, or on secondary prevention, early detection. Uh, what I spoke about yesterday was primarily we need to do both because they both have value in the long run. If you look at the data in the U.S., despite everything we're doing, mortality rates continue to rise. And at the end of the day, that's what we care about. We want less people to die from melanoma. Um, so there is room for this, but it, our, really our focus right now is across both centers, both on the primary and the secondary prevention, and hopefully that will make the biggest impact of the future. Yeah, there are several studies looking at the value of screenings and primary prevention. Certainly the German study that was done several years ago is a very powerful measure. The same types of studies are currently being undertaken in the U.S. Uh, the American Academy of Dermatology is developing a data registry to try to collect these kinds of data. Uh, but it takes a while. You need five, ten years of follow-up really to look to see what the impact might be. Well, I think it's important that we understand that skin cancer is a worldwide problem. And I think a meeting like this is very helpful because we really can share ideas and there are synergies that occur to hopefully make even a greater impact on cancer in the future.